Welcome back, my friends, to episode 21 of Beyond Bricks and Mortar. Now, today I'm joined by Aislinn Cushing, or as her friends and family call her, Ace. Fantastic name. Ace is a 26-year-old entrepreneur who left the cushy, comfortable world of PR and moved into becoming a full-time entrepreneur and building her own business. Now, making a decision like that in life, as many of us know, comes with a tremendous amount of fear. And most of the time, a long list of implications that we don't normally see until we take that plunge. This conversation is meant to go deep into the mind of an entrepreneur, one who takes that leap and defies that risk. One of the things I really enjoy talking about in this conversation is the fact that one of Aislinn's partners is actually her mother. Learning a little bit from the perspective of an entrepreneur who has now created a business relationship with family, that's an interesting context to learn about, given all the stigmas that normally come with that sort of thing. Ours, the brand that Aislinn has built, is slowly taking the world of fashion by storm. I've been following her on social media for quite some time, getting a first-hand look at this journey, and I'm really grateful to have her in the chair to share this experience. For any entrepreneurs out there, for anybody building their own business, this is the conversation for you. As always, I'm very excited for you to listen and watch this one. If you are new here, welcome. New episodes of Beyond Bricks and Mortar are every single Wednesday, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Keep listening, keep watching. We have a tremendous lineup coming up in the next few weeks. So now, without any further ado, here she is, Aislinn Cushing. Rarely, if ever, do I get to do this with someone I've literally never said a word to. I'm so, so excited. I kind of like that. I know, me too. I like the opportunity to, like, get to know someone totally. in this forum totally but welcome thank you for having me of course thanks for being here i hope you don't mind that we jumped right in i am ready um it's so funny to hear my voice isn't it through headphones it's wild. everyone has the same reaction i like kind of love it yeah. <laughs> solid solid radio me, voice but, yeah. solid radio yes. voice <laughs> so pronounce your name for me aislin aislin yes. i have never heard that name before it's gaelic Okay. Um, I'm Jewish, cool. so I don't know where that came from or how that <laughs> happened, but thank you, mom and dad. Um, yeah. What was the inspiration for that? So it means dream revision. Ooh. And that's very befitting then. Yes. And, um, my grandma actually said, and my mom will get mad at, you know, me giving my grandma credibility for finding the name, but, um, she always said that she could picture her granddaughter walking into a boardroom of uh, male CEOs and um, them saying, okay, and like, this is ace. And they, you know, think a big like males coming in and this little petite blonde <laughs> badass walks in. <laughs> ace is a great ace. nickname. Yes. That's very, very strong. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I love that. And you do, I have seen that before. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. a good nickname. Yeah. All right. Well, before we jump into the questions, yes. I do want to give the audience just a little bit of context sure. about you. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell me a little bit about Ours? Yes. So Ours is an elevated comfort wear unisex brand. Um, and I'm always hesitant to say it's a fashion brand because when I created this idea, um, I've always been very, very passionate about lifestyle. Mm. So... I feel like it's more of a lifestyle brand. Um, and the idea was that during COVID, um, you know, we're all wearing like comfortable clothes and we look however we look and we got very comfortable being comfortable. Right. Um, and I am someone that has never wanted to sacrifice that even if I'm leaving the house. So you can put on... Um, an outfit at home and be on Zoom, you know, be working at home and then you can go to lunch and you can wear the same thing and then dinner and maybe change your shoes. Yeah. Um, so like bring, really bringing the comfort out of the home. Yeah, I did the uh, like the suit jacket and tie and shorts. Exactly. Zoom move. Exactly. <laughs> um, so it's all very kind of male inspired, um, you know, oversized button up shirts, uh, men's style like pajama type pants. Um, we have a short, um, but I think more than that, I really wanted to give my friends, but really to give myself something um, 
that like wasn't so confined to like yeah. fit into a box. Just comfort that looks comfort, good. Com- comfort that looks good. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I felt that this was a very appropriate topic mm-hmm. after reading a little bit about you and doing as much re- research as I could for this interview and just what I've learned about you from speaking to Carmen. Mm-hmm. We have the same coach. Yes. Um, a very powerful individual who mm-hmm. has certainly for me personally like really propelled my career forward. Mm-hmm. But again, I felt this was very appropriate. But making a life-changing decision. Yes. Yeah. Like changing careers mm-hmm. or ending a bad relationship. Yeah. Just going down a road that you never really would think to go down. This is like the epitome of fear yes. for so many. Yes. Such a cataclysmic moment in time where a shift like this just seems impossible. Yep. Walking away from what you know, a comfortable situation, impossible. Yeah. You know. Believing that you'll succeed in something that's that you never really thought you would succeed in, right. impossible. Right. Becoming a successful entrepreneur, seeing it through, impossible. Seeing beyond fear through to courage, impossible. Mm-hmm. So my first question to you is, how do you make the impossible possible? Oh, <laughs> that's, I mean... It's crazy. I was thinking about it as I was getting ready this morning, the kind of person and the kind of mindset I had two years ago or even a year ago compared to, you know, yesterday we did a photo shoot with a top fashion photographer with models from Wilhelmina. Like never in a million years did I think that I could do it. And it comes down to the courage Mm. and just almost shifting my mindset. Um, So as I was getting ready, and I say this all the time, my mom, for example, so my mom is um, our CFO. And my mom is someone who will say herself, she really lets her anxiety rule her perspective. So you have 5 million things wrong and she's automatically like, you know, we can't do it. And I feel like I have shifted to have this almost delusional mindset where I have to believe that I can't fail or else I will. Like I have to be delusionally confident um, and not give myself the option. And sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Like this is going to be impossible. Um, but I've shifted to this delusional mindset that it's like, but if I put my hands on something, like it cannot fail. It yes. won't fail. Yes. Um, I don't know if that is, you know, innate to who I am as a person and it's just come out through doing this. Um, but it's definitely not someone, I didn't used to have that mindset. Yeah. Um, well, courage, courage is hard. So it's, hard. It's a hard one. So you know, hard. And it's a constant uphill battle and a workout to maintain courage, especially when you're an entrepreneur, when you're building anything. Totally. You know, perspective and keeping perspective is part of courage. Totally. You know, that's that's something Carmen has like beat into me yeah. after years. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, I'm someone who's always been stopped mm-hmm. by financial stress. Mm-hmm. You know, like going through the motions, becoming successful in what I do and trying to raise and support a family, totally. you know, that comes with a lot of challenges financially and, you know, keeping it, you know, even though as business grows, so do expenses, right? Totally. So, and it creates a tremendous amount of anxiety, yeah. but then there's like the whole perspective element of it. Mm-hmm. You know, Carmen actually drew this little diagram on my board. Mm-hmm. Um, I've added to it a little bit since, but... She basically came in here one morning and she's like, you're here and you're basically just upset that you're not there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like that's really all it is. And when you put things into perspective, you realize actually we have everything. We have all the tools. We have everything. Yeah. Not just the tools, but also everything to be grateful for, which kind of is the main core element of that Mm -hmm. perspective. Yeah. So, but yeah, being an entrepreneur is hard. It's hard and um, it's interesting. So I met Carmen when I was really, really 
down. I was in a corporate job, very corporate, doing PR for a very big uh, quick service restaurant, um, working at an agency. And it's interesting. I kind of hit a point where I said, if I don't quit now, I'm going to be doing this in 20 years. Mm. And if I don't quit now, then what am I doing with? Like, I'm not fulfilled yeah. at all. I'm not deeply fulfilled. And I would almost have to convince myself, oh, but, you know, I launched this new coffee drink. Um, yeah. Wow, like, this is great. But, like... I was not making an impact on anyone. Yeah. Um, and Carmen asked me, well, what do you like about your job? And the first thing I said was, oh, it's stable. Mm. And she said, okay, like, let's look at what stable means. Like, yeah. What is stability? <laughs> I'm like, who is this 411 woman like asking me what stability is? This is like, very like positively triggering for me. Uh, yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... So I said, well, you know, it's like I have job security. Mm. She was like, let's break that down. At any moment, you are just a number to them. And even though, yes, you are excelling in your role and you're receiving praise all the time, this is not stability and this is not security. Um. And she said, like, imagine if you could create that for yourself. Yes. So it's almost like taking the fear and turning it on its side and looking at it a completely different way. I never thought in a million years that working for myself equaled stability. I knew that was the goal 30 years down the line. I never thought of, like, starting out as an entrepreneur, like, that could be more stable than having a corporate job. Well, I think like a, a, a large percentage of that is rooted in mindset. Mm-hmm. Like when the mindset shifts, it creates stability. Totally. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to mean dollars in the pocket on a consistent basis and as much. Things, yep. It right. Won't. Yeah. As much as it's just like, this is mine. Right. It's ours. It's ours. <laughs> yeah. Is that kind of like where the name came from? Where What's, what's the root of the name? Yeah. So um, I'm someone that, well, so... <laughs> The short story is... We have time. uh, You can make it a long story. I can make it a long story. (laughs) (laughs) So my boyfriend, I like have all the loungewear in the world. And also part of this idea really stemmed from the fact that I was spending so much money on all of this. All of I was going to say, are you like the one that has like 20 pairs of sweatpants? It's me. (laughs) And like there's a whole after two like uses. And I'm like, this is so sad. Those were... Very expensive. <laughs> um, so I bought this new Mad Happy. Do you know Mad Happy? Yeah, I do. And I'm I think a fan. they're a super cool brand. They have, you know, this whole mental health component, which I think is amazing. What's the mental health component? So, I just thought it was cool sweatshirts. Right. So yeah. um, they, I don't know if it's that they partner with specific mental health organizations or maybe they have their own organization. Um, but everything that they do is um, in advocacy for mental health. Okay. So if you go on their website, they'll have, you know, like different campaigns. And I think a part of the proceeds might also go to organizations that... That makes sense with the name that that would be the mission. Yeah. So um, I got this very expensive sweat set. I walk out into the kitchen. My boyfriend's wearing it. And I'm like, why do you look better in that than I do? (laughs) (laughs) And um, he was like, it would be so cool if there is something where, you know... You could wear it. I could wear it. Yeah. Whoever could wear it. Um, but it was like actually good quality. And so I kind of started playing with the idea. Um, I would say all of my friends, it was obvious to them I would end up in this industry. For me, not so much, but I think that more so came from self Industry of beliefs. fashion? Fashion, lifestyle. Yeah. So clearly it's embedded in your personality. I think it's embedded in my personality. I think that I kind of pushed it down because of this confidence. Yeah. Lack of confidence. Um, and I met Carmen and we started working together. And so we, you know, came to She's this. She's the perfect partner for this. Well, perfect. so it's funny because when I met her, and for those of you who don't know, her background is in fashion. Um, and she's been at, you know, 
all of the top designers. I'm still working on getting her in the chair. <laughs> so. Soon. Yes. <laughs> um, and she said, like, I'll never go back into fashion. And my intention was never to go into fashion specifically. And so it was, you know, kind of irrelevant to our relationship. Um, and she said, okay, work on this idea for the week. Create a business plan. And if you spend more than, I don't know, maybe it was like nine hours on it and you're, or even six, and you are finding yourself like drafting this business plan in your free time, like you know that you're onto something. Mm. And like if it flows. Exactly. And I'm someone I feel like I'm so creative, it almost hinders me sometimes because I have all of these ideas and it's hard for me to have the follow through to completion. Yeah. Um, and I remember that week I spent like 30 hours on this business plan. I like neglected, sorry to my old bosses, um, all of my like main work that I had, I'm not sorry, (laughs) all that I had to do. Um, and I just, from that second was like hooked and it was such a good feeling. It was such a good feeling. And I told her and she was going to connect me with someone who helps young entrepreneurs in fashion create fashion startups and after about a week she was like actually I'm not going to connect you with this woman I want to do this wow um you you, I remember her telling me about this yeah uh we're very very close and I remember her telling me about this early staged Mm -hmm. you know when she met you Mm -hmm. and when she kind of thought okay I'm gonna go in I'm gonna do this and I said to her I'm like you're making your comeback. Yeah. You're making yeah. your comeback in yeah. fashion. This is like when Jordan returned to the Bulls. Totally. <laughs> totally. And I it's mean, so it's so perfect for her because now she is in a different place where she can bring a totally fresh perspective to that world. Totally. So and I think like it's this is like a home run partnership between you guys. To learn from someone who is so powerful and so um, confident. Confident. <clears throat> She walks into a room and she, Owns not it. not only is she confident, I feel like she really brings out the confidence in other people. Yes, it's um, very energizing to yes. speak with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I find. Like every time you leave a conversation, you feel like a burst of energy. Totally. Yeah, but that's that's really amazing, and it's great that you're on this this track. So, mm-hmm. what's how long has have you officially been a business? So we um, really started last October. So not very long. Young. Very young. And it's been growing very quickly and it's transformed very quickly. So I went into this saying, you know, I want to make some loungewear. Hmm. And now we are made, sourced, manufactured in Italy. Yeah. Um, So we're in Milan all the time. We are working with the top of the top manufacturers, fabric mills. Um, It's really crazy how quickly it's transformed and Carmen will be like I did not know I was getting into this I'm like thank god I didn't either else I you know would have quit while I was ahead but no it's really transformed it must be fun too it's to be like traveling and going to these fabric mills and it's fun it's stressful it's but above anything else like I've just learned so much yeah and so I've touched so many different things it's yes I'm like founder and creative director but I'm like coding for the website yeah. i am doing like everything so yeah that's um, what an entrepreneur does i've learned when so, you have to bootstrap so it. much yes i'm <laughs> like i did not go into finance for a reason why am i doing this math but yeah it's well eventually you won't have to yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is it like to be in business with your mother i think that you know for many yeah. Being in business with family is a tricky one. Yes. And many choose to stay away yes. from that world. Yes. That being said, I have seen a few examples. Like, for example, my father and his brother mm-hmm. have been business partners forever. Yeah. And it really works. Mm-hmm. And you see a very, a very powerful and workable dynamic between them. Right. So I think the, the, the intent with the question is more so to get your understanding of your experience working with a family member Mm -hmm. and how you've been able to make it work because maybe there are others out there that are hesitant to consider that world um, just from the stigma that comes with it. For sure. 
That's a great question. Um, just came up with it on the spot. It's <laughs> <laughs> we're navigating it. Um, yeah. The most important thing is, and it sounds simple, but communication. Yeah. It's hard though when it's your mom, um, or maybe there's so much communication and you're so comfortable with them that you kind of like lose that professional boundary a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been, I think, amazing for our personal relationship. I think that she and she told me um, after our first few months working together, she said, "I've never seen you." with such determination and aggression in my entire life. Wow. You're really doing the right thing right now. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think in the past, I've I've been more, uh, I've been fearful to be assertive. Um, I feel like, you know, in school, for example, I would excel. I'd be the best in the class at something I loved. And if I didn't like something, I was not determined. Um, And I think that's very much my work ethic has shifted. And for her to see that part of me, I think is also very empowering to her. Yeah. Um, And so it's definitely difficult at moments. Um, And I think that for us personally, we are comfortable kind of, you know, laying it all out on the table almost too much sometimes where we have to say, okay, like we need to be professional um, yeah. and deal with it as if, you know, we were two separate parties working together. But um, I think the beauty of it is just how invested we both are and how well we know each other. Um so we can really, you know, make sure like our vision and our mission are coming to life in the most authentic way. Mm. Um, I'm yeah. sure it must be also very rewarding for your mother to see her daughter really fall in love with what she's doing. Like yeah. you, you, you clearly love the work. Yeah. And I think that is just paramount to being able to propel whatever you're doing forward. Yeah. You have to love the work. You have to love it or else you'll burn out. Yes. Um, and it's okay exactly. to burn out. If like if you love something, it's still okay to burn out. Um, like I don't think it should prohibit you from trying something. Yeah. But I really do think like you have to love it, um, and you won't like come back from that burnout if you don't. Yeah, I think that was also like the big turning point. Um, you know, when I started working with Carmen in the coaching context. Yeah. Um, you know, we worked together for a few months Mm -hmm. and in those few months she had helped me like clear out all the poison yeah you know there was a lot that i was kind of keeping Mm -hmm. in my mind you know past experiences things like that that i was kind of like blaming for whatever place i was in my in my life at that moment in time yeah and once we cleared out the poison then i started to experience burnout Mm -hmm. in my work Mm -hmm. and and quickly uh, she helped me understand that I'm not in love with the work itself. Yeah. That it's not the, you know, the work itself is not the thing that's waking me up every morning. Yeah. But there was a moment in time where I decided to just start making video. Mm-hmm. You know, I went like really heavy into that world because like you, I'm very creative. Yeah. And that's always been my strong suit. And yeah. when I, and I only realized that then, like, wait a minute, when I look back on my life, yeah. like, creativity has been kind of everything to me and I've always gone through different creative hobbies whether it's music or video or anything else anything I could think of um so I I put together one video Mm -hmm. uh like documenting my week in real estate and I showed it to her and she watched it and she was standing with me on fifth avenue like on the street watching it on my phone and she just she's watching it and she's silent and then she looks at me and she goes okay do this wow and I was like I think I'm going to do this. And she's like, what, what can you commit to doing? I was like, I could do one of these a week. And that's what I did. I did it for 52 weeks. It like not only made my business explode, yeah. but it, it made me explode. Yes. You know, it like really blew up my world to make it all about this. And in yeah. a moment in time, like five or th- three or four years into 
this business where I was kind of like now considering something different. Yeah. It like brought me right back into the fold. Yeah. And where I'm going with this is like, that's what I try to, you know, teach my team Mm -hmm. is that if you want to be in this business, Mm -hmm. I want to help you figure out how to fall in love with it. Yeah. That a business like real estate is a vehicle for what you really love to do, what you're passionate about. And I would imagine that it's similar in the context of fashion, which is a brutal world. So it might not be fashion itself. In your your world, it's like loungewear. That's what you really love. And using fashion as like the vehicle to create and make something that you're really, really proud of. Yeah. You are 26 years old, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that you did this kind of with perfect timing. Yeah. Because I would imagine that the willingness the willingness to make a big shift is a little bit easier the younger you are. Yeah. Like you said, you were kind of, you touched on this in the beginning. Like, if I don't do this now, I'm never going to do this. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what moved you to becoming an entrepreneur, to taking the risk, instead of maybe just finding another job? So I actually did find another job. Oh, okay. And... <laughs> Um, it was at a very, 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 very large fashion, lifestyle, hospitality, mm. very high end company, holding company that owns a lot of different brands. Um, and I went to Carmen and I said, okay, you know, I'm on my last round of interviews. Um, like, maybe this is it, right? It's a little bit more creative. Um, I also live in Aspen, Colorado, so it's You very, do? I do. Really? Yeah. So are you, like, you're only in town on business right now? I'm here frequently for work. Okay. Do you have a, do you have a home here? Um, my roommate from college lives here. Oh, okay. So, so you have a crash pad. <laughs> <laughs> I always joke. I didn't like, realize I that. I thought you rent. lived in New York. No. Wow. No, I know your business is kind of headquartered in, in Aspen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Headquartered in Aspen, um, but you know now I'm here with Carmen a lot. Um, and I said, you know, it's this hub, like Aspen's this hub of like lifestyle and fashion and food and wine it's and blown up the all last of few these, years. you know, things that I love. Um, and it was going to be like leading out on events for this um, high end spirits company. Mm. And Carmen sat me down and she said, like, this is awesome. So glad you had this interview experience. You can't take it. (laughs) She knows how to scare the shit out of you. This is what you've been asking me to do. (laughs) Like, what do you mean I can't take it? And she's like, Aislinn, every single thing that you hate about your job, you're going to find in that job. Mm. You keep on saying you want this independence. You want this freedom. You want this ability to create and not have it be boxed in. Like you want to um, truly curate and control like what your output is. And you will not have the freedom to do that at this corporate job. You are going to, you know, be stuck in this promotion cycle that's up to them again. You are going to have a team that's telling you what to do. You are going to be um, doing all this, you know, admin stuff that you're not passionate about. Busy work. Busy work. That's not, you know. Which is like contributing to your own life, right? Like I'm, I'm honestly, and you know, hindsight, so happy I had that experience because I think it's built my work ethic. Yeah, um, the work ethic think, that your mother is so proud of. Right, and I know. think, you know, working on things that you don't love is very, very important. Um, but she said you can't take it. And at the time, I didn't, I was like, what do you mean? And now looking back, thank God, because I would have been stuck in this rut, in this cycle of letting other people determine, like, my success. Yeah. Um, and... I do think it's easier at 26. I don't have kids. I'm not married. I'm not responsible financially for anyone but myself. Um, but that being said, like I see my mom who just turned 60 this past year and she's doing it. And yeah. for her, like the fear is very much more tangible. Yeah. Um, 
but maybe the, that's where the strength in your partnership is because yeah. you have each other. Yes. And that's like, that's an unbreakable bond. Totally. And you touched on this a little bit earlier that like, as long as you two maintain the respect between each other, yeah, you know, then that, that really creates a limitless potential in your partnership. And I think like the practice is almost like pushing against the fear. It's like, okay, I'm not scared to do something. That means I have to do it. Yes. Um, so I think once I allowed that shift to happen, um, everything else just flowed. And it's still, you know, so stressful most days. And there is fear. Um, but not letting the fear, like, control mm. my path. Um, and, like, fear, I think, is... I think fear can be a very positive thing. Yeah, it's the gas in the engine. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Is there, would you say that there's like a resounding influence from your previous career in PR that carries forward to this one? Like what are the things about the, your, you know, your experience in PR that you are really deploying in this business now? I think being client facing and learning how to have clients and manage clients. Like communicating with yeah, clients. Yeah, taught me um, a very, very strong work ethic. I think, you know, being given a deadline i'm someone that tends to procrastinate Mm. um i don't love confrontation me too wow you're really speaking my language i'm very (laughs) avoidant um and also on the other end like when i get very passionate and creative about something i can be avoidant because it's like this constant nitpicking you know i had to get our website up yeah and i kept stalling and stalling and stalling and it's not that i wasn't working on it like i was working on it for eight hours a day every day for weeks but I just wasn't satisfied with where it was at. So I would almost like avoid. I'm like, okay, but I have to fix this. Mm. And I have to fix this. And I have to fix this. Um, and when you're in a more corporate job with deadlines, with large teams, with clients that you're meeting with every day, like you don't really have the option. You have to deliver. Um, so I think, you know, working with those what felt like limitations actually did set me up for success for working with other people. Yeah. It was like your training ground. Yeah. Um, and I do think as much as that corporate setting was not right for me, I was lucky to feel very empowered by my team and always have very empowering, um, bosses. That's great. Where do you, where do you think that that, fear of confrontation really comes from because I have the same thing but I think I've always had difficulty figuring out why yeah um I think I feel like we speak the same language it's almost like it's the perfect perfect person to talk about this I think for me it's a few things I think so my parents got divorced when I was 13 months old uh, I was five. So I think it comes from divorce. I think okay. it come, part of it comes from this, you know, walking on eggshells a little bit. Mm. Wow. Okay, that hits. Yeah. And I think it feels like um, it's easier to avoid because I think is you know, kids of divorced parents, like you do avoid. You avoid, you know uncomfortable situations with yes. your parents you walk on eggshells around your parents it's anxiety it's constant like fight or flight mode a little bit uh. um and even if like you don't rem- like i don't remember it as that but of course you know you're that young and like you feel like emotional tension yes um so i think it comes from that um i think that i'm someone who tends to ruminate over something mm. so kind of obsess about it in my head and I'll keep going over it. Um, And it's hard for me to just like let things go or just move on. Yeah. Um, I'm the same way. Yeah. But it's, 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 it's incredible because I keep reverting back to your partnership with your mother. Yeah. Because it's almost as if this path that you're on is so perfect for you. Yeah. Because, you know, God willing, your mother and you only get stronger in right. your relationship and in your business relationship. Yeah. And that bond and the mm-hmm. strength of that bond and with the support of a, such a powerful figure like Carmen, yeah, your fear of conflict 
is going to just fly away with the wind. So like I, you're going to know you have such a team in your corner. Totally. And as an entrepreneur, like that is the greatest strength you could possibly have is the support system knowing that like it's like jumping out of a plane knowing you have a parachute. Totally. It's interesting. Um, I think my mom doesn't love conflict either, but she's, you know, has much more experience with it. Right. That comes with just age and And then life Carmen, I don't think, I mean, who likes conflict? But like, yeah. she's very good at oh conflict. My God. She's like, like, she'll she'll she's like, like a samurai. This is it. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and she always gets what she wants. Like, she always gets what she wants. I was like, teach me that. <laughs> yes. Um, but I, so we, of course, were, you know, doing everything in Italy and doing business in Italy has not been the easiest. Um, also, I think just fashion within the industry, like it's just very old school still. Mm, yes. Um, and so there's just a lot of like unspoken rules. And, and like stubbornness. Stubbornness, ego, yeah. um, a lot of fiery personalities. And I think it does come from, you know, everyone is creative and they really want to put out the best work possible. Um, but I think it often, this like stubbornness and ego driven personality often you know, hinders people's abilities to work well together. Yeah, and to evolve. To evolve. Um, and so we've come up with a few situations of conflict, which have not been the most comfortable. Can you give an example? Yeah. So tell, tell a good story. Let me think of one I can share that doesn't uh, <laughs> ruffle any feathers. Um, if you feel afterwards that it does ruffle feathers, you know, I feel we can like, get rid of it. <laughs> I feel like it's important, though. To um, ruffle feathers. I think, it's impor- I think it's important to share, like, the authentic experience. Couldn't because agree more. never in a million years did I think fashion was actually like this. <laughs> yeah. You think, oh, it's just in the movies. Um, it's brutal. It's brutal. It's brutal. Okay, let's hear it. Um, and it's not ruffle been, some you know, it's not been so brutal for me yet that I'm like, at this point, anything could happen. Who knows? Yeah. Um, Oh, you're just getting started. We're just getting started. So it probably won't sound like a big deal to most people. uh, But this was, I think, our worst like (gasps) moment. Um, We are working with a manufacturer and the manufacturer produces for top of the top brands, luxury brands. Um, very, very talented, very talented. You can see their work. I mean, the most beautiful. And this is the thing about Italy. Like everything they do is with such love and passion. It really comes through. You know, they're not just working to work. Like, yeah. I think Carmen told me, uh, I forget what she said the average salary was, but it's way lower. It's than about quality US. of life. More than it's about quality else. of life. So we really see like the love and the passion come through the product. Um, that being said, we're working with a manufacturer who is not the most organized. Mm. Um, and I actually think it comes down to a lack of communication internally between their team. Um, and I always say like they need a Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we are doing, so our first collection is Portofino. And we're doing these Love stripes. Love Portofino. Love Portofino. <laughs> so uh, I'm wearing the stripes today. Nice. Um, but we have a few different stripes in some like pinks and browns and some blues. Um, and long story short, the manufacturer ended up mixing up our stripes. So we have... Wrong color patterns. Pants being made and shorts being made. And we have different quantities. We're doing many more shorts than we are pants. And they mix it up. Oh, no. So, like, you did you not realize this until you opened the box? So there were no mistakes on anything we sent to them. We triple-checked everything, you know, all of the orders we put in. We, we thought immediately, oh, my gosh, we ordered the wrong fabric for the wrong stripes. We thought it was our fault. We go back, we check, um, and we did everything correctly. And it was a mistake on their end. And in the world of manufacturing and in the development world, like that is a huge mistake. Yeah, it's it like, you know, like you're ordering 
uh, white t-shirts and they end up making purple t-shirts. But this this is something that you didn't realize till it arrived at your door? This is something that we didn't realize until we were in Portofino for a photo shoot. Oh. Um, and we were like, oh, we have the wrong stripes. And What do you do? So you just we, flew to Portofino. We flew to Portofino. We had a trunk show and launch party already on the books. We needed these photos to launch. And we said, like, we can't put out a pant in blue stripes and then say, oh, just kidding. Like, actually, it's yeah. a pink stripe. Like, it doesn't work. Wow, it was really that drastic it was that of a, drastic. a mistake. Wow. <laughs> so every, we're freaking out. And I said, nope, like, we're just going to go with it. We're going to go with it. We're going to be agile. We're going to have them switch the stripes and we're going to do the opposite. We're going to do, you know, the pants now and whatever pink and the shorts and blue and oh, so you're moving with the pattern i'm we're just gonna go with it wow um that's courageous <laughs> and so we did and it turned out great um and but it's funny we were at the manufacturer and we were kind of all looking at each other and carmen was kind of waiting for me to talk about confrontation waiting for me to say something to the manufacturer because we had realized you know when we were there that day and I um, didn't say anything and I waited and I said something after when I was alone with my mom and Carmen um, and it ended up being fine um, but kind of going back to the confrontation thing like I told my mom and Carmen next time there's a moment of you know there needs to be confrontation like I want to own that conversation because it's something that makes me incredibly uncomfortable and even though we were able to figure it out and it was fine and it ended up working in our favor, for some reason, like I was in front of the manufacturer and I was so scared to say something. And I think it comes from that fear of confrontation. Yeah, of course. But it's also like, okay, this is like my company. Yeah. This is my money I'm spending. Like, why am I so fearful? to be assertive yeah. in that way. Maybe you're afraid to lose the relationship with the manufacturer or throwing a wrench in that yeah. engine. Yeah, or I just, I think okay. also like a part of it is I just want to please people. Like I just want to make yeah. people happy. Yeah. But I also like want them, I, it's not even like, oh, I just want to like make, you know, satisfy them. No, like I want to make them feel yeah. good. You want to you want to create impact. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's the practice of like learning that balance of being... You know, I think there's a way to be like very assertive, but also very kind and makes people respect you more versus being aggressive. Absolutely. So is the product now like the error? Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. Yeah. That that would make for a great name, like something like what's, how do you say the mistake in Italian (laughs) or something like that? (laughs) Seriously. You know, like that, that might be a good name for a product like that. Yeah, so it's now the reverse. Um, the reverso. That's <laughs> yeah, the reverso. <laughs> yeah, like a JLC, the exactly. watch company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's fine. I mean, what do you do? Like, I could sit and stress out about it and spin myself into full anxiety. Yeah. Or go with it. And like you said, be agile. Yeah, you it's have a good I word. Mean, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and it's been, been received very well. Yeah. So, do you ever have a fear? that what you're doing or the path that you're on won't work? It's interesting. Um, I was more fearful that the path... So when I quit my job in PR, I thought naturally I have to start my own PR agency or do PR for my own clients. That was what my education was. That's what my experience was. um, That's what my network was. And I was very fearful when I was thinking about doing that, that I would not be successful and that what I was doing wouldn't work. Very, very fearful. Um, With fashion, for some reason, like I have this delusional, like maybe I'm crazy. But like, I know it will work. Um, and I don't have that fear. And I hate to say like, oh, you just have to fall into something you love enough to not have that fear because 
not everyone has something yet that they are fully in love with. They haven't to found feel it. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I just feel like my hunger gives is you courage. At a different level. Yeah. Like, yes, of course I'm fearful, you know, I'm fearful. I think the hardest part right now is it's like, you know, if even if I'm not fearful and I have full confidence in what I love, like what if people don't like it? You know, what if it doesn't land for everyone? And accepting that it's not for everyone, yeah. even though it's ours. <laughs> but like really accepting that like it's okay if what I put out like doesn't land with everyone. Um, I think adjusting my mindset and shifting it to that perspective almost eliminates the fear because it's okay if it doesn't yeah. it's okay if people don't like it um so i don't know i just feel like with this like i really don't have that self-limiting belief yeah um, do you think that part of that is because you are doing what you love yeah 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 so on the heels of that <clears throat> for an entrepreneur who's battling with that fear Mm -hmm. of failure Mm -hmm. of falling Mm -hmm. what advice would you give to them to just keep moving to keep going maybe your business isn't old enough yeah that you haven't found you haven't had any like almost life-threatening fear moment fearful moments yeah but you will i will that manufacturer was just and yeah yeah we've had many moments where like you know, we've had situations and if we hadn't moved through them, um, I don't know that we would have, we've looked back and said, wow, if we hadn't figured that out, like we probably would have had to stop doing this. Um, I think the first thing I accepted was that I could not do it alone. Mm. I could not do it alone. That takes courage to accept that. A lot of us feel like we want to be, we want to do it alone. And I kind of thought, I always like had this vision of an entrepreneur in my head. And I always thought, okay, you kind of have to do everything alone until you can really like onboard other people and like really convince them of this like idea and make them believe in it. Um, And the first thing I realized was like, I cannot do this alone. You know, there will be some things that I'm, the best shot on our team because that's my experience and there will be other things that I'm not great at and if there's someone else that's better than me at it and I don't necessarily need to you know perfect my skills in that area like why am I spinning my wheels and wasting my time um so I think having a team not only is important in terms of you know like actual work that has to get done but also just like boosting confidence yeah and like not feeling so alone yeah. Um, Could lean on each other. Leaning on each other, I think, is huge. I think, you know, going into a new field, for me, almost took away that fear. Because if I failed, so what? Yeah. It's like, okay, great. Three people that, you know, I've met in this industry, like, oh, where's ours? Oh, it's nowhere like it failed like I don't know like worst case like who you yeah. know at the end of the day who cares like at least I know that I tried something yeah and if it doesn't work like great because it'll put me on the path to finding what the next thing is and what I do love mm. um but if I prohibited it it from if I if I never started then I would never know so maybe the right question is how do you start? How do you work up the courage to start? It's. I think this is a really important one because I had always had so many ideas and it seemed just like impossible to get over that boundary of starting that I never would start. Um, it would really, really prohibit me. Um, and... I hate, like, I just don't, I think it's awesome people that are, like, goal setters and they have, like, their benchmarks they want to meet mm. and they have different, you know, um, strategies put in place to kind of keep them accountable. Like, that just will never be me. Um, What's the alternative? Diving in and, like, just 
getting your hands like wet in anything of that you know project that interests you it could literally be a pinterest board it Mm. could be the mood board um yeah it could be anything it could be anything that kind of just like gets your wheels turning and makes you think oh like wow okay I see this idea and like how does it connect to this and this and this and then kind of like mapping it out that way for me was really helpful because it really started from like this creative vision and brainstorming and coming up with like well what if we could do this and we could do and it's okay that it didn't start to see it yeah it's okay that it didn't all necessarily connect with each other and make full sense yet um but I think I just had to like get my hands wet and like do the creative stuff that interested me and not become so hindered by like I need the business plan to be perfect and yeah. I need to have these five-year goals something that we're lacking like we don't have five-year goals yet that's something that we really need to sit down and do yeah um but that kind of stuff and that pressure really I knew if I you know expected myself to create that from the beginning that would prohibit me from doing it um, so I just kind of like focus on the things that excite me. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it became very real. And I realized, wow, I have to do a lot of things in this job that don't excite me. Yeah. But now it's too late and I'm in it. So like I have to do it. Yeah. You just have to go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you're three very powerful women mm-hmm. in this business. I asked this of real estate agents, mm-hmm. women who have who have done these interviews with. Mm-hmm. Um, or these conversations, I should say. Because historically, when you look back at my business, women have really controlled the top of the game for a long time. Yeah. You know, like when you look back at the history of some of the best industry's best home sellers, yeah. real estate agents, they're women. Mm-hmm. So the question I have for you is, what do you think gives women a unique advantage um, in business overall, in entrepreneurship? Of course, yeah. fashion is is a, is a, is a business that, I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. it's predominantly... Um, it's predominantly run or controlled or succeeded by women. Yeah. So what do you think gives women an an advantage in business overall? That's a great question. I think that some women, most women, are able to wear their emotions on their sleeves Mm. A bit more strongly. And I don't think that comes necessarily from... I think that's like a societal norm, right? It makes sense. Females are more emotional. They're more vulnerable. You know, men have to play this like strong role and be together. Um, But they have more... But women have more empathy. Have more empathy. They understand. They calibrate to people. Um, And so I think with that... It can be easier to see, you know, to create like a creative vision that is um, inspired by like emotion and feeling versus just like the dollar amount Mm. and just the bottom line. And I think in fashion, you know, it's so create. There's it's so you have to be so creative and you have to kind of like birth something like from this um creative emotional place um so i think like part of it is that um i think it's also just i think a lot of it too is just like societal kind of like expectations and norms um like my brother is 21 he goes to Northwestern and he's majoring in econ and is that what he wants to do no I think he would actually be amazing in fashion Mm. but I think like he feels like he's put in this box yeah because of these expectations um but I think it's changing a bit like with my generation um have you ever um heard of stamped No. Or like a sushi club. No. Um, So uh, this guy started Stamped. It's S-T-A-M-P-D, I think. 
Um, and he does different sushi club pop-ups with Nobu. Oh, so cool. there's like a New York sushi club, Aspen sushi club, Malibu sushi club. And he's created this really, really successful fashion company and startup. Um, and he is just someone who's kind of like, I think, turned it on its head for males of that age. Um, so I think, you know, the younger like role models that continue to pop up, hopefully like younger men will be inspired to kind of like go after it and yeah. just like not listen to this, you know, norm and pressure. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. I do think just inherently like the way that like females and males are in business are like different. Yes. Um, and I think that's okay. I think that it's important to challenge yourself though to be the opposite of what you naturally are. And step into the shoes that are a little less comfortable. Totally. Yeah. I'm yeah. with you. Yeah. So what's your vision for the business? Like right now you're the creative director. Mm-hmm. So what's next? I feel like... As I know we, you mentioned you're working yeah, on the five-year plan. As much as we try to plan... But you must have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, you know, so something that's really interesting to me that's a part of it. I love culture. I mm. love traveling. I love lifestyle. I love learning about different people and like why they are the way that they are and the influence that they have on other people. Like I, I feel like if I was set on this earth to do one thing, it is to make people feel good and to um, help them like uncover like who they are. We have just discovered your why. <laughs> or we have just stated yep. your why. Yep. So I feel like with that like it's important to me that this work that I do uncovers that Mm. um so what's next I think like really you know making people feel at the core of this for me it's like making people feel truly confident in their own skin and like empowering them to like accept who they are and own who they are Mm um versus trying to be someone else and so as long as i can continue to do that i'll be happy um i love fashion i do worry that like i ask myself like will it be enough you know will it be like truly like soul enriching like will i be making a difference i do think there's a space for that in fashion i do think there is a need, you know, to have more brands that make you feel like that about yourself where like, you know, you're wearing the clothes, like the clothes aren't wearing you. Right. It's like, and that's also kind of like an opposing viewpoint in that in fashion. For sure. Um, so I don't know necessarily what that, you know, tangibly looks like, but like that is my goal. You will find it. And as long as I can do that, then... I will be and always like bringing that sense of like self and exploration and curiosity to the clothes like I don't have any fashion experience I have zero background in fashion I have no design experience I can't draw to save my life um and um but you trust your taste I trust my taste. I think that's really important in any creative. I trust my taste and I think that I have always had a pulse on what people like Mm. but I also don't ever want to go so far into pigeonholing myself into like like I'm not the Prada and I'm never going to be Prada and I don't want to be Prada yeah you don't want to become too stubborn about your vision you want to be like I and I don't want to go like I want the room to have it evolve Mm. in the direction it does um so who knows um, I love it. But something with, you know, really, you know, bringing out that like self-exploration in people. Well, you are early in your journey. Yes. And I wish you nothing but success. Thank or you. Hatzlacha, as we say Thank in Hebrew. You. I know you're going to crush it. You Thank got the you. right team. Yeah. So just keep it moving. Thank it was you. such a pleasure to meet you in this Thank context so and to have you in the chair like this. Thank you for being here. I Thank know how busy you, you are building Thank a business. You. Thank you. So I hope to continue to follow your journey and to really see it come to fruition. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. Whoa.